You're in charge. Go for it. Okay, you can play it. Oh wait, go up a little bit. My bad. Um, right there. Perfect. Okay. Scene one, take two. Okay, actor ready. Okay, action. Hi. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Um, I see that you went to school abroad in Germany for four years. How did that work out for you? Oh, it was great. It um, definitely shaped my view of the world. <laughs> Actually, it actually works. Okay, I used to. I was <clears throat> Rolling. Clapper. Right before I was heading over here to go film for Scarlet, somebody at the window is like, "Hey, are you filming that Scarlet movie and or that, or that movie with Christian?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So Fast Coast is great. I met uh, Mr. Christian Ackerman actually on the set of Yellowstone, it's a small television show that they've been filming here in Western Montana. I likely described him, I met a guy with a lot of energy. Yes, that's probably your exact words. This is not going to be your usual like summer camp, we can't be a summer guy. We're the Academy of course, so we're going to do, like we're going to make a movie. I want to see if you can make a movie in a week. And he came to me with this proposal and he said, do you think we could do that? And I was like, eh, yeah, maybe. Basically, Christian handed me like a cowl with nasty hair, like a dreadlock on it, and <laughs> some like burnt plastic and a bunch of other things and I'm like, okay, <laughs> now what? <laughs> and he's like, just make something out of it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I got a phone call and the, I think the feeling that I got was like, you're in a room, there's other people there and you're like making phone calls, right? And I was one of the phone calls like, Mara, we've got this idea. We want to make a movie. We're going to start tonight. Can you give us the rest of your week? And I said, yeah. I can. <laughs> to me, Scarlet reminds me a lot like the, the old thrillers. Actually, to me, it has a lot of aspects of like um, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think I always describe Scarlet as a psychological thriller or a mystery where something weird is happening to a woman and the audience maybe isn't sure how much of it is real and how much of it is in her head. All right, you can run. Gonna back up and then run into oh, it. Yeah. Right here in this room, I do the whole Walt Disney pitch. I tell them the story, like as if there was a campfire in the room, and I'm telling them this story. And I tell them this long way. I don't do the elevator pitch. I do the story pitch, and I tell them this whole story. And they're like, "We're in." And then right there too, they thought of the name of the movie. And then I told them, "Okay, here's the problem, though. We need to start filming right now." There's other problem. We won't have time to write a script. We could probably write an outline, but we have an outline. You guys all, we all know the story now. Like we all knew, they could tell the story to somebody else. We all knew it. We have to go film right now. Plus we have to cast it like right now. So we went forward with it. We didn't have a script. From morning to night, it was a uh, nonstop filming. Very interesting time, but it was, it was actually, it was awesome to see it all actually come together the way that it did. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna come up close. That was actually cool. So I like went home, probably cried a couple times because I burnt my finger and was just so frustrated because I didn't know how to do anything. And I'm like, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. I don't know what he wants. And so I'm just like crying at like one o'clock in the morning. And my, my dad comes down and he's like, what are you doing? You're making it worse. Like, just calm down. And then I'll, I have like this bowl of flesh that I just kind of like stick onto things and hope it, you know, turns out better. And I think Christian like contacted Van 
um, a few, like, I don't know, a yeah. little, a it little. Was pretty sudden, yeah, it was, I think. We yeah. went and it was that we cool walk. We were shoppers. Walk. We were shoppers and there was that super creepy donkey. Thing. We were super excited to be doing this film in Hamilton. And we're both huge horror fans, so it was like, yes. Yes, we're doing a horror film in our town. How well do you work with team environment, what you're saying? Um, I would say I'm very good in a team environment. I'm friendly and I like sharing ideas with other people. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking, that's good. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. That looks so, yeah, so sick. Cool. Keep doing it. Raise that scythe a little bit. Show us it. Do your twitches. I think the interesting part was the way we did it. We did it in how many days? Like four days. With a lot of students, which was amazing, seeing them behind the camera, seeing them even edit the film and everything. It was pretty cool with that the way we did that. When I did Carpenter, I was just, I mean, I played a few parts in Carpenter, but nothing major. You know, and, and behind the mask, you don't really see, you act that much, you know. So when I played Brad, I was able to actually talk. And and one thing is, people don't realize that we didn't really have much of a script when it came to dialogue. Mar and I were there just saying whatever. And one scene where uh, Tim and Mara are sitting on the bench talking about like, and that's where Mara really like like confronts Tim about um, something's not right. Like this world, am I like, am I, am I, I'm living in a different world. And so she starts like to lose it. But I was like really impressed with like, with that. It was like really like, it was, it was cool. It was cool to watch because she was able to like, keep her um dialogue the same like keep Stay it going the same like him, yeah. like yeah. like her and uh tim were able to just like say the like the exact same things over and over again like in the exact same way the exact same length yeah one of that's my favorite scene well i think the crazy mics and the the merc too and and victor those are my two favorite scenes that we shot it's a lot of fun filming in true locations you know we both uh had Sorry. the Sorry. first generation Os osmo mobile yeah and uh and so there's this really long shot we have from all the way back towards this, like a wet, the West House, which is here, all the way up Main Street tomorrow. And I remember I walked all the way up Main Street from all the way down there and just held it. And if you hold the trigger, it locks so it doesn't turn or pan or anything. And I walked straight up, so it's not perfectly straight. Yeah, all that I was shot on like, an iPhone. Okay, iPhone 10, yep. Yeah. I didn't. It was all iPhones. So that was actually like our second camera because we had the NX 500, and that was the camera with the lens. And Sorry, I thought you were starting in the aisle. This is when she's this is when she's back up to sound direction louder and more intense. We're just going to take our one time to draw it out as long as possible. That one is like. That will like come down. Yeah. See, so like, her husband, and, like, come back around this way. Oh, we don't have to do like that. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. For this safety shot. Okay. Yeah. This safety one, and then we'll want to know the safety shot, then we'll get you out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 It is, it is, it's really a fun experience. I do mostly theater. So I'm very comfortable with a script. It was a really nice challenge um, to not have a script, sort of have a loose idea of what had to happen. I mean, we had a loose idea of what had to happen in each scene. There was one moment when everything got set up and we're sitting there and like ready to call action. And I was like, um, like, I don't, wh wh what's happening? What's this scene? And everyone kind of laughed, like nobody told Marley. So I sort of showed up and everyone's ready and accept me. But it was really fun. Um, everyone was really supportive. And um, it, we were working on a pace, but I never felt like anyone was impatient with me or, um, or that I wasn't able to do the job. Everyone had a lot of faith in each other and everyone worked really hard. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have to move your head back. No. Um, so it's almost I'll be looking. I'll be looking at that. Yeah. And she can be looking at you. And then, if you're looking at them, then you can see. You can see this. Let me think about this. Yeah, I'm out of the party. Okay. I don't know that they'll need her. Are you getting Who's gonna change it? Who's gonna start?
Well, I think uh, yeah, Bam so has to middle. start because he's yeah. in the middle. Right. Okay. Let's do it again. So then, so you could be yeah, all. I'm just gonna take like a beat and then yeah. kind of disconnect and just. Okay. And I'll just go with you. That yeah. that quickly. Okay. Well, I can say seriously. What are your name? Seriously. And I'm gonna acknowledge what are your then... name? Everybody working around their lives to try to get into this. Well, the studio to me always felt like the clubhouse. It's the best kind of work because yeah. you love doing it and you get more out of it than you put in. If you want to get involved with it, all you have to do is talk to anybody in it and they want you to be a part of it because there's a synergy that happens that two people together probably the, the sums of the parts exceed, you know, it compounds on itself. So the more people you get involved and you get to meet these great. You know, like these young guys that I've met through this and the gals are just fantastic. And it's like any other team, any other thing you're part of as a group, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you have a bunch of people pouring their heart into it and they believe in the project and they, they, they've they become their character and they're interacting in the, you know, so I was impressed and I love to be around people that have a respect for it. Just like any group of people, like it takes a second for the gears to start moving in sync. Once you get to set, like I said, like that energy and that, and you have like a similar vision. Oh man, tonight's the night. Premieres tonight. Prepared to scream. Uh, the first screening was uh, was inter it was interesting. It was fun just because of the fact that it was it was a challenge to actually set the projector up on a stand that. I think we had it taped to a chair that was sitting on top of a desk, and this was uh, this was pointed at a tablecloth that was across the room. And when we got to the point where we heard that it was going to be shown at the Ferroplex, uh, we already had almost a full working cut at that point, and so all we had to do was a few random adjustments with the audio and the uh, the visuals and things like that. But once we got it there, it was such a stark contrast compared to the first screener. Uh, it, we packed out the uh, the theater, and it was just it was just all around an awesome experience. I did have some people come up to me after the film, and they told me that it was that it was great, and that they greatly enjoyed it, and that they were really looking forward to other projects that we had in the works. <laughs> yeah. oh, good. Thanks, man. There's Tim. There's Audrey. There's Carpenter. There he is. He's right there. No, it was it was great to see it have a true like local premiere on the big screen and actually it wasn't if you know the fairplex there's many screens you know there's the smaller screens we can hold like what 40 people inside of maybe and then there's the bigger ones we have the big one we have the number one competing against john wick 3 which is an amazing film by the way and endgame as well and we had a we had a packed house it was really cool to see it on the screen have my kids with me my little girl was terrified the whole time but yeah, it's a really cool experience to experience that experience. I'm gonna say it one more time. Yeah, go. So we had a rough cut, um, like rough cut showing of Scarlet in what what is now Fast Coast Productions. Um, basically showing not showing it with a projector and a bed sheet and <laughs> with metal chairs, and I was like kind of embarrassed because I'm like, this is just gonna like I was like, Mom, you don't understand. It's gonna be so bad but it's great like I love it and it just don't laugh cause, cause, and then like four or five people came with me and like I was just real scared <laughs> I was like please like this like I was like you guys know me just 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 don't worry about it it'll be fine yeah and then I think going from that and then hearing that it was gonna be showing at the Fairplex and like my mom's like is that the one that was like at the like we're sitting on the metal chairs and you know <laughs> like yeah, and she's like, on the bed sheet? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, they're showing that at Ferroflex? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, well, I knew that it would be better because it's been like, you know, a year. You know, they've been working really hard on it. And then we went and saw it with 
you know, my parents came and like the whole theater was packed out and it was, it was really crazy like just to see that people wanted to see it, how good it was and I think it's really cool. I remember even saying to the group, I go, we could totally fail, but what if we make it? And we did. We totally succeeded and it, it's so uh, awesome. We even showed at the Fairplex Theater during the same night as the, all the other mainstream movies. And the crowd just kept on getting bigger as people were showing up. Just kept on coming, showing up. Oh. <laughs> we have a filmmakers here, so we kind of come prepared. Right. Yeah. Hey guys, wait, I'm gonna show what I see here. Sorry, sorry, okay, wait, wait. Whoa. So, this is kind of like, we don't have enough people here, I don't think. I don't think so. I was actually I worried that people would show up, but they didn't. So yeah, it's I know, it's great. Five people? Yeah, five, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is crazy. Guys, thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, that was definitely, you know, then a year later to have the, the screening oh, in great. the theater and like a whole crowd of community members that came out for it. And we're so excited to see a movie filmed in Hamilton. I was really um, touched by the amount of um, community support. And there was some sort of a trailer that sort of showed Fast Coast, all the stuff that you've done. And I choked up, like here are all of these amazing projects that you're working on. You're in education, yeah. you're teaching kids, you're doing professional filming. Like it, I got really choked up, like. <laughs> Fast Coast is an amazing group of people and Christian Ackerman who is the leader of Fast Coast, wants anybody who is even remotely interested to walk in the front door. Because once you're in the front door, you get an arm thrown around you. Your options are limitless to get involved in the awesomeness that is this little family. Like, um, there's a website, I'm sure there's a phone number, you can, you know, Google any of our names and I'm sure we'll be tied to Christian Ackerman and Fast Coast. And his hyperactive Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, he is everywhere. He's everywhere yeah. I look. This was my opportunity. I was like, I'm gonna do a film school, a film academy, the way I want to do a film academy, where we actually make feature films. But we don't make them just to go out and like once and go, woo, that was great. We actually make things, actual feature films that we put out there to the public and put on the, the streaming and put out there like on a DVD or Blu-ray. Um, and get it out there and put it and enter it in a film festival and all that good stuff. Now I'm just like excited to be able to uh, next summer because for sure I know that I'm going to get that text like two days before like the pre-production meeting like two days before and he's like oh okay let's go and then and then he pitches an idea and then the, either that day or the next day we're out filming it and doing it. So oh, I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited for, stuff, for the next stuff. Yeah. for the next project. Whatever's new and I even getting out there. Fast Coast Film Academy came out of nowhere, literally came out of nowhere, and, and we made a movie, and we did it. And we, it's because we gave ourselves that opportunity to possibly fail at something we love doing, but we didn't, we succeeded. And now, who knows next where it's gonna go because tonight we're doing the audio commentary extras, we, we did some extra interviews, so we're gonna actually have a little, like right now, this thing is gonna be on, and you're watching this probably part of it on YouTube because you're going to have this extra content now on the Blu-ray. So we're going to actually have this movie go out in film festivals and other places that will have us. So I'm pretty stoked about it. I would say, viewer, don't, don't be concerned that you won't be satisfied by the end because it's, it's a trip. But you will get there. You will get to your destination by the end of the movie.